That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. Okay, I don't... Whatever it is, it's not right on the teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. No, there is. We're, we're going to be staying, yeah. Okay, but... I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. Okay. Ready? There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? What is it? I don't know what that means to play us out. What does that mean? To end the show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is a. <sighs> Again, in five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we will leave you with. Uh, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. F*** it. We'll do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. F***ing thing sucks. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Skizzleman. Thanks again for watching, and we'll leave you with Richard Thornton and a cut off his new album. Take it away. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Uh, that, that was a fun clip. That was a fun clip. You crushed that. it. Thank Acting you. chops there, man. Dude, that, that was. That, that drama theater workshops when you were a kid really paid off. It was am- You know, <laughs> it, here's what's funny is, and this is what I want everybody to know, is that this and that whole opening, uh, that was all your idea. And it was so good. And I had it in a fever dream one night. Yeah, yeah, I, had to, I had to double check with you. <laughs> this idea is stupid. Well, so he, so you texted it to me. Yeah. And I, I, so I was just chilling. And it was late at night, and you texted to me, and because uh, we knew we were going to do a podcast about anger, which is what yeah. this podcast is, and uh, you texted this to me because the "Do It Live" by Bill O'Reilly—that's a clip I showed you. I think I don't know, a handful of months. Yeah, ago. Yeah, I'd never seen it until, and then you kept saying, "We'll do it live," and I was like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah. And then you showed me the clip, and it was hilarious. It's so funny, and it's from like 15 years ago, maybe even yeah, more. Yeah, 15 I years. No idea. Yeah, I think it's about it. And um, it's a, you know, essentially Bill O'Reilly is losing it. So your idea was, you're like, dude, we're going to do the do it live scene. And you told me, you said, and you know, you're going to do the Bill O'Reilly part. I'm like, dude, I, yeah, the answer is yes. So we have, you and I in this podcast have um, an interesting dynamic to where we want to very much support the other person's ideas. Uh, and and you've put up with a lot of my crazy ideas. You stuck a trophy up my nose. I stuck a trophy. I and I had to keep a straight face. I stuck a trophy up. And your you nose. didn't even tell me, like, well, I, I, did I know why we were doing it? No, I, that's a, <laughs> that's I, what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't even... You just go with it, and it's really, um, it's it's a delight. It makes it makes you a, a really really solid co-host. So then you had this idea, which and it was going to be me on on the spot to do this, and I didn't do it because I'm like, oh, this is my time to do his thing. It was because it was instantly a good idea in my mind. I'm like, <laughs> this is instantly a good idea, and here's the deal. I don't want to phone this in. I yeah. want this to be very like done very well, and and I was like, and you're going to be the producer, so you have to learn the, what the producer's saying in the background, mm-hmm. and I want to get everything down. They did every hand gesture, every sniff, and all that stuff. I wanted to get it down, so I listened to it a lot, and as I listened to it, it never got unfunny to me. Yeah, and what it ended <laughs> up doing was that exercise made me realize that this podcast. It's, there's no need for this podcast to, to be bleak on any level. The, the anger, yeah. we're we're gonna we we need to talk about the the real detriment of what anger can be. I bet but, there's people that were afraid to click on this one could because be. they thought, oh, we're gonna be, it, it's gonna be a negative vibe. Yeah, because the title's anger, whatever we end up titling it. But uh, we are gonna be talking about anger, but not in the way people are probably envisioning like <laughs> tell you. i mean look at the opening we're, we're keeping a light I'm you know? t- dude anger can be funny yeah. you know what i mean and that's and that's and don't get me wrong i'm not celebrating anger but i'm saying that it's this podcast is going to be fun i want to talk i think about we can it. reflect on times when when we we kind of spilled over the top you know we, we burst it a little bit like bill did in that clip you yeah. know yeah. And there's been times in our oh, lives 100%. that, that yeah. we've done that and then and then at the time you're seething mad, but after the fact, it's kind of like you can you can like laugh it off and yeah. be like, yeah, that was whoops, <laughs> yeah. I lost my cool. Yeah, and I think I think people will have a, a you know, they'll relate to losing. I, I I don't think anybody's gone their entire life without losing their cool well, at least once, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe but, somebody has, but well, you know, so I don't remember what song it is. Obviously, you know, I'm a 
huge fan and also you of rage against the machine mm -hmm. and um uh zach the singer zach de la roca or de la rocha i still don't know which one it is uh he there's a song where he he says your anger is a gift and he's really talking i mean it's called rage against the machine he's talking about fighting against the man and the system uh he says that your anger is a gift and what he's talking about is you you were given the gift of anger to change things when they're unjustly out of balance right that's what he was talking about so we can cover that as well but uh, i also want to i want to share some of my moments where I, you know, I flipped my lid and, and, and it was, and it's not, it's not common. And uh, especially as the years have gone by, um, I used to get uh, upset a lot when I was younger and that's now it's few and far between, but short fuse, it, it used to be a short fuse, fuse has gotten longer. Yeah. Fuse is as fuse gets longer, but bomb gets bigger, <laughs> right? <laughs> it can, it, can. <laughs> it really can. And that's, that's what I feel like. Well, it depends on the person. I mean, I'm willing to, I know people with short fuses and big bomb. They, those mm. people and then i'm like we're not friends you suck you know <laughs> i don't want to be there yeah. around you but uh let, let i will say this about you impulse you are very long to get mad like it takes a lot for you to get upset and when you're upset I'm sorry, dude. It's always just funny to me. Like, it just is. Like, there's never a time that I'm like, oh, leave him alone. You know what I mean? Like, every time you're upset, it's so rare. But when it happens, I'm like, I got to hold in my laughter because it's just going to make it worse. But you, because you just have these like outbursts that are so. So, I'll give you this example. This was a million years ago. I think we've talked about this on a podcast before. It was so long ago. And we had to stop by your house to do something. You had to like download a file onto a USB stick oh, or something. Dude. No, that was back in the day when the, the, the okay, so there was floppy disks mm -hmm. and then we needed more space as technology advanced, you know, like mm -hmm. pictures were getting more pixels and stuff. And uh, they created a zip drive. Do you remember? They were like the the thick boy I do. floppies. Yeah. And I had one of those. I thought it was so cool because <laughs> it was like an external yeah. zip drive, you know, and and you put in the, the zip disk. And I had to copy it. We had like a presentation or something. Maybe yeah. it was the Segway oh. presentation. Was oh, it the Segway we were, presentation? We were good. That's how long. We were in college. It was yeah. that long. Yeah, we go. were in college. Yeah. So, yeah, we had to like, oh, we got to go to school. We got to do this presentation. It was probably our Segway presentation. Uh, and I put the disc in to copy the file. And we were running late as usual, as most days we were, you know, especially yeah. when I had to wake you up to go to school. And, and so we were running late. And I, was, and I just need, needed these files to copy. And we had maybe 30 seconds yeah. to, to get them copied and get on the road so that we could make it to school in time. And it wasn't going to happen in 30 seconds that day. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was one well, of those things where I, I was like, why is it so slow? I was confused <laughs> as the file was copying because I had copied files to this zip drive <laughs> many times. And there's never been a problem. But for some reason that day, it decided to just transfer really Really slow. Oh, soup! Something was wrong, yeah. and it was basically derailing all of your expectations. Yes. Okay, and that is that is that is one of the main catalysts of what it is to be angry is when you have an expectation of something and that expectation is not met. Mm -hmm. People have the capacity to get angry. Well, I'm standing behind you while this is happening, and you're and you're doing this thing. You're like shaking at your desk. You're like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, you know what you reminded me of? You reminded me of of Peter in Office Space when he's trying to shut down his computer so he can leave before Lumberg comes in. You're like, come on, come on, you know, yeah. you're one of those. <laughs> and uh, you're you're just like, come on, come on. And I'm watching from and I'm just kind of laughing. And then you do this, and then you set your hand slow down, slow down, slow down. And then you just stared at the computer, and you went, ah! <laughs> Dude, it was the funniest thing in the world. And I was the worst friend because I just started laughing oh. outright so loud. And you were just so mad that you, like, you lost Dude, control. Dude, I think I was going to pick up the monitor and throw it out the window. <laughs> you know? Like, I, I, yeah, I lost it. Well, I think, I'm trying to think of, like, okay, Obviously, I got triggered, right? Oh, yeah. And my trigger in that scenario, I think, is the fact that, like, I don't like being late to stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to be late to school. I don't like being late to if there's, you know, I, hey, we're going to meet up at 7 p.m. at a bar for yeah, yeah. whatever. I, I don't want to show up at 7.05. I want to be there, you know, at least 6.59, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so I have that innate in me, and I knew right then we're going to be late to school. And yeah. I was Pissed. Well, it was a big deal. We had a pre we were oh, yeah, giving we a presentation. A presentation so that was actually kind of a wasn't it wasn't just being oh you know yeah. can't be late. It was we have a presentation. We're going to get a bad grade if we don't get. But there. you're right. I mean, I had an expectation. Okay, well, we have time. I this file should copy in this amount of time based off of past experience. Yeah, and it wasn't. And and I'm like, uh, it was one of those things. Like 
right now. Seriously, out of all the oh, times, yeah. Oh, yeah. you have to do it when we're already late and we only have X amount of time yep. to get to school for this presentation. And now's the day you're going to just decide to be slow. I know. Why? Well, I, <laughs> it's ones and zeros. It's, What's, it's, what happened? There's no hamster Murphy's in there. The, the hamster's like, I don't feel like running the wheel today. No, yeah. that's not how computers work. Let that, what? I know. <laughs> so I know. I, I, I feel you. That's, we talked a little bit about this either last pod or the one before um when i did that thing with you and and false and i think cub years ago and that day my network was like you know i don't really feel like playing it was like mm -hmm. the biggest stream i've had uh, to date uh, you know back then and it was like yeah i think i'm just gonna drop like all your packets you know what i mean i'm just today no 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 rhyme or reason i've been fine for months and i'm like really today i remember being very upset but um you know, I'm starting to get to a zone to where sometimes there's just certain things you you can't control, and you have to identify those moments and yeah. just try to just sort of write it out. Like it sounds so crazy to say, you know, this is here's an example, dude. Uh, last or you know, a couple of weeks ago, geez, I'm losing track of time, but my my daughter ran that that half marathon. Mm -hmm. She started, and then she started the race. I got you know footage of her starting, and then my my wife and I wanted to drive the car and go to the halfway spot and get a picture of her there. Traffic was the worst. It was like the craziest thing, and we didn't understand why people were all like, I'm just going to drive like 10 miles under the limit. Like, what is happening? Well, we get to the halfway spot. We get, we find a place to park. We go run into the spot, and we missed her by about 60 seconds. Aww. Like, it was quite literal. We got to the, so it's like a, it's like a hairpin, like turnaround point. And as I'm running up to it, I pull out my phone, and I can see that she's her, she's already moving in the other direction. I'm like, oh, we missed her by like a minute. That was a moment where it was like, I am so upset about this right now that I want to break whatever's in front of me. I want to take this phone. I want to smash. I mean, all these things I want to do. Why is that our first reaction to break, to break stuff? Well, it's really, a, it's it's mostly a man's first reaction. And, and I don't, I don't fully understand that. Yeah, right? I wonder like, why. I don't know. I, it's, it's this, I don't know. I, you gotta, yeah, it's. Cause I, you're right. I, I'll tell a story after yours, but uh, yeah, I had that where my release was coming home and breaking something but yeah finish yeah, first. so i was like i wanted to do all those things but it lasted a few seconds because i'm older and wiser now and and i'll tell you a story on when i was not as old and wise and that was a bad day but this was uh a situation i'm like well there's that's it there's nothing we can do you know what i mean there's nothing we can do we let's the only thing we can do is go back to the car and make sure we get her finished and my wife and i were both visibly she was visibly upset so was i but it was like there's, I mean, there's nothing we can do except for move forward. Yeah. So I'm just going to focus on the moving forward piece. And so we got in the car, got back, got great, you know, footage of her finishing the race. And and now, you fun. know, next time when you're stuck in traffic and you're trying to catch up to your daughter's race, that you just need to text her and tell her to slow down. I know. Seriously. I was like, you, you're <laughs> running and you beat us. We're in a car. Dude, She's I, out running cars. That's yeah. how fast your daughter She was is. cooking, dude. You're not wrong. I actually said that to her. I'm like, you're too fast. Yeah, we couldn't we get couldn't, to the... We couldn't keep up. We're in a car. You. We couldn't get there in time. It was crazy. Oh, uh, But yeah, it is interesting. Like the uh, like you just mentioned the braking, wanting to break something. And I mentioned throwing the monitor out the window. But I remember early, like this was early. I was probably 10, 11, 12, and I was in basketball, you know, and had what I had a bad practice. I had bad practice, and uh, and coach let me have it as as well, like you know, because he was he was kind of one of those coaches we talked about him before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and and uh, I got home. I was I was steaming mad, you know, at, at myself and at getting chewed out for having a bad an off day. Yeah, and. Uh, I wanted to break something. And this is back in the day, you know, like the mayonnaise jars were jars. They were glass, you know? Yeah. And uh, my mom liked them for some reason. We'd finish the thing of mayonnaise and she'd wash the jar and keep the jar, you know? Yeah. Free jar. <laughs> well, not free, but you know. And so she, we ha she had a stash of mayonnaise free jars. Jar. And so my desire to break something, you know, I was like, what can I break? And, and that's what came to mind. I was like, just, She's got too many of these stupid mayonnaise jars anyway. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> almost finished eating the next one. So uh, she won't miss these. So I, I took a couple of the mayonnaise jars out back, and, and we had this, like— uh, This is a great story. <laughs> I never knew this. Oh, dude. So, uh, yeah, I'm remind you, I'm, like, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, yeah. right? I'm young. And uh, I'm out. So I took the mayonnaise jars out back to—they had an RV gate, and it had a big— <laughs> concrete cement pad you know uh, and uh i'm just out there just throwing them at the ground as hard as i can so the glass just shatters everywhere and <laughs> i'm saying every curse word that i at the time knew you know 
<laughs> just just cursing up a storm. Uh. And next thing I know, I turn around and my mom is standing at oh. the door watching no! me break her mayonnaise jars, <laughs> cursing up a storm. And she's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, the coach yelled at me. <laughs> you know, I was so mad. And she's like, Okay, I'll get you a broom. <laughs> like, are you yeah. cleaning up this glass? <laughs> Dude, oh, I think what might be what might be my favorite part of that story was the she's got too many of these jars anyway. Yeah. <laughs> she's collecting them, man. Like, you you know? You know? It's like it's, my kids do this to us today. I'm crying. My kids do this to us, uh, us today. Like they go to empty the dishwasher and they go to put like the glass bowl away in the cabinet. And they're just like, there's no room in here. Yeah. And and we have to tell them, like, no, you have to, like, stack them a certain way in order for them all to fit in the cabinet. You yeah. know what I mean? It's almost like Tetris. Yeah. You know? Uh, and so that's how I kind of was with those jars. Because every time my mom would be like, put another mayonnaise jar away, I'd be like, there's no room in here. And that's why I'm like, okay, she got too many. These got to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm smashing something. That's, that's got to go. <laughs> that is, I'm, I'm doing a service to this yeah, family exactly. right now. <laughs> Oh my god. So I'll tell you, and that's so let me ask you this. Let's try to like journey back. Now 10 10's very young. You, yeah. You're given one heck of a pass on this. 10's, 10's young. Do you remember how long it took you to calm down from that moment? And how long did it take you to feel pretty stupid about that? Yeah, no, I think on that one, uh, about the time my mom was like, What are you doing? It all clicked right then that I was like, Oh man, I really lost my cool. Yeah. I'm over the top. I'm way over the top. I'm breaking her stuff, you know. <laughs> well, she and now I got to clean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now I got to clean it up, you know. So there's that kind of walk of shame with the broom of yeah, yeah. sweeping the glass afterwards too. So that one I I, I came around pretty quick. All so, right. Yeah. That's see and that's that's uh that's good to hear. And and I, I any uh, any others? I, I got yeah, I got one. another embarrassing one. I was a few years older on this one. Um, Let's it was, go. It was something. It was so stupid, man. Let's hear it. Like uh, I'm still embarrassed of my actions oh, to this you, day. You, you I know. was probably now in my teens, okay. so maybe hormonal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my dad had asked <clears throat> me to like uh, close the case of the like the pool, like the pool equipment had like a a gate around it, and it was like enclosed, mm -hmm. but whoever had used it last had left the gate open and the door to the thing open or whatever. And so my dad asked me to, to, to take care of it, go close it. So I did. I went and I closed it. And like a little bit later, he yelled at me like, I told you to close that. Why didn't you close it? And I was like, I did. And he's like, no, it's not closed. Look. And I look out the window and it's open again. And I was like, what the, I was, I was, God, really mad because I know I closed it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't, and I was getting accused of not doing sure, something sure. that you know that I know I did, and, and that was a bit of we talked about that yeah, in the yeah. pet peeve yeah. podcast, mm -hmm. right? That's one of my pet peeves. Don't accuse me of doing something I or not doing something in this case yeah. uh, that I did do, and <laughs> and so yeah, I went out there and I, I closed it again, and I was pissed. I was just like stormed. I stormed back in the house, and I went to my bedroom, and I tore my bedroom apart. Oh my goodness! Like tore it apart. Like, like, yeah, I had anger problems, right? Like, um, I remember, like, I had, it was, I had a water bed back then, you know, and it had the little like padding on the frame, the wood frame that goes around. It had like these pads, and the pads just kind of slide down onto the wood. And I was, just, I flipped them all off. I the know bed. what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, I flipped all of them off the bed, so they're like on the floor, tore the sheets off, and I was like, t just taking stuff out of the dresser and throwing it everywhere. I just trashed my room, oh completely my. trashed my room. <laughs> you got to clean it all up. And I, yeah, I'm the one that had to clean it up, you know. <laughs> and and I, that one, I don't think anybody knew about that. I don't think anybody knew about that. It's not like my it's not like my parents came in as yeah. I was making a ruckus in the room and was like, what's going on? And I was like, I, I'm mad because I know I closed that gate, you know. It's like, so how stupid would that have sounded? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that that's... one, that one, I think, took a little while. Like, after the room was completely destroyed and I looked around and I took a couple deep breaths and... I realized, oh crap! I have to clean this <laughs> up, you know, and and then for a while, just because I'm mad that I didn't close. I, I don't know what happened to this yeah. day. I I either didn't close the gate properly and it came back open, or somebody else came along and sabotaged me. I have no idea. Yeah, but I just knew 
I did something and I got accused of not doing that something and that wasn't sitting well. Yeah. And for some reason I thought trashing my my bedroom was gonna solve whatever. I don't know why we do that. Yeah. Why do we break things? What why in fact I was um I was actually this is I mean this is no I, I don't really pop that much. Even when I was a kid and I get angry about stuff, I typically don't pop, you know, I just got angry about a lot of stuff. Like any normal kid or whatever you want to call it. But when I was like somewhere in my 20s, this is, I mean, that's old. There's no excuse for this. And I'm not, we don't need, I, I may or may not have put my fist through a windshield. And that was a very. A windshield? Yeah. How do you not break your hand? I, these, I was very, I, I have a. You have brass knuckles on you or something? No, I, <laughs> I, and actually, and it was a hammer punch. It wasn't a, a full on, it was a hammer punch. Yeah. And, uh, and this is, the, the, now this, now this is not funny. You know what I mean? Because this was really. Um, it was, I was very upset and, uh, I honestly, what's crazy is I barely remember, I barely remember what it was even about, you know what I mean? But I remember being very, very upset. And when I, when I put my hand through the windshield, I remember being very surprised. And now let me tell you, let me tell you how crazy, this is where it actually is a little bit funny. This is how, how poorly my brain was working. I was going to hit the hood of the car, but I was convinced that I was so mad. That if I hit the hood, the car's gonna explode. <laughs> like I'm gonna hit. Like I thought I was the hole. You're gonna total the car. I thought I was gonna total the car. But yeah, it was a ridiculous. Wow. This is ridiculous. I'm like, oh, not the hood. And I redirect. I'm like, just the window. That'll be fine. And I and it just went right. I mean, just it was well. Bad. I mean, to be fair, windows are cheaper to replace. They are much so than an exploded go. car, correct? But I hit the wind the windshield and um. The in the way that works is, I mean, it didn't. It doesn't like shatter. It broke the whole thing, but it wasn't like it shatters. Uh, what what happens to a lot of people when they hit a windshield is, it's very sad. If their face hits it, that's one thing. It's the face coming back and that all that glass reclosing on the skin, right? And that's what mm. ends up happening. That's what happened to my hand as I hit it, and there was there was a a very good amount of of blood, and it was because all that. When I when I came back, the whole window smashed and then kind of flexes yeah. back to where it was, and it grabbed it all that. Pinches into yeah. your skin. Yeah. yeah, of course I didn't feel a thing. You know what I mean? As you can imagine, I didn't feel anything. I was just so Jeez. steaming mad. However, um, it had the the reaction of it all. Like I, I would say the the regret, if you will, was in the, in the feeling stupid, um, and the sobering up, if you would, like of the of the rage. Pro all that happened within about five seconds. Like it was one of the most humbling experiences of my life. This is a long time ago. And I've never done anything like that since. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that mm -hmm. was just so, such an awful feeling. And, and uh, like, uh, I just lost control of myself uh, that it was like, that's, that, I feel really dumb. Like, how do I not have, I mean, that's a, that's a serious lack of control right there. Mm -hmm. And so nothing like that has happened since. And I'm glad for it. But I think that eventually in this podcast, I think we should move into some anger management techniques. Some I've been having to do. Of my own, because I've been very frustrated at, at work lately and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, we talked about it last week, right? Yeah, a little uh, bit. Spread yeah. too thin, and, and work's not been kind. And work's not you, so. in my mind, yeah. I so. mean, it's, I work at a great place. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to complain, but I just, but no, it's, it's that we don't need to go into that, but I'm just, I'm Yeah, seeing, I don't want to get you riled up. No, we're not going to get me, we're not going to get me don't riled up. Don't get you riled up. So, yeah, okay. So, what do you do when, when you're in these meetings <clears throat> that are just starting to get your blood boiling? You know, it's, uh, I'll tell you, there's, it's so hard to explain, but like, I don't think that there's anything special about me. I don't think that I have all the answers. I do think I have some answers and I do think that we are making very bad decisions and I'm seemingly the only one that thinks that these are bad decisions. And I feel confident that I've articulated why this is the wrong thing to do. Um, I am, I am, this is an uphill battle. I, I, I really seem to be the odd man out. I seem to be the only one. <clears throat> who thinks this is a bad idea and for the record i already i know i'm not because some people have told me in confidence that they absolutely agree but i'm the only one that's vocal about it so i think we're doing the wrong thing i think it's very bad for the organization what we're doing um i think it's it's undoing a lot of great things that we've done this is my position on it i don't i'm not mm -hmm. happy about this however i told um i told my boss i was like this you, you guys are doing it all wrong, and here's why I think this, and this is the bad, this is the wrong thing to do. But you know what? If I'm causing problems by being so against the grain on this one and being the only person, I'm going to try to exercise the disagree and commit. I'm going to try to do that. That's good, something I'm going to work on on myself, and it's, I, I don't think it's going great. I think I'm doing <laughs> it, but I think I'm still like, 
come on, man. Like this is this is a this is different. You know what I mean? This yeah. this exercise th- th- this uh, disagreeing commit is like the one person in the house who's aware that the house is on fire and being like, you know what? Everybody else is blind to the fire. I guess I'll also just pretend there's not a fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the yeah. people who are going to be affected if this goes the way I think it's going to end up going are people I care very much about. And so I, 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 I didn't come out of the gate swooping like, this is a bad idea. I was like, no, 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 let's not, don't do that. Don't, don't, that doesn't belong with the type of job we do. That process is going to slow us down. That process is going to muddy the water and it's going to shift our optics in regards to what's important. We, it doesn't work here and, and here's why. And it just, it, all it did was fall on deaf ears, fall on deaf ears. And I'm like, I, what am I missing? There's no way I'm not explaining this right. I, mm-hmm. What am I missing? So now, above all that, now I have to be a part of this nonsense. And everybody knows how I feel. <clears throat> and yesterday I was called out on the carpet in front of everybody uh, to talk about how did we feel about how all this planning went and all the stuff I said we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's I like, really? I was, yeah. I've been very clear. The person that called you out knew yeah. your feelings. Well, that's fair. This, this person may not have. And so this one, this person may not have, and maybe he mm-hmm. wasn't briefed. Like I, I will say this, though. <laughs> I will say this. I'm willing to bet that the second, and I, and I was the first person to be asked to share how I felt on how things went. <clears throat> I'm willing to bet that the second he asked me, several people were like, oh, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, here's, I'm not going to be that guy. I've already explained my feeling. I've always, I've already said that I'm going to disagree and commit. I'm not going to be that guy to be the, the Debbie Downer. I'm not going to bring us down. I'm also not going to lie. I'm not going to lie and say, this was a great idea. You guys did great. I'm not going to do that either. So, you know what? I said, I have no comment. That's <laughs> what I said. I have no comment. And then and, and there was nervous I was laughter. surprised. I was surprised you didn't put in a little like, like, well, I'm gonna keep this short because you've already wasted enough of our time. I don't <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, like, <laughs> dude, let me let me be very clear with you. I I know that I can wordsmith. I know I mm-hmm. that I know how to do that stuff. And what wanted to come out of me would have been like that, that. It would have probably shut down the meeting. They probably would have been like, "What are we supposed to do now? Are we supposed to keep talking?" Like one of the mm-hmm. members just completely ripped apart what we're doing here. I don't want to be that guy. I, I do it to management, the people who can make decisions on whether or not we should yeah. do this, but it didn't work. So I now now I'm here and go ahead, waste my time. Just keep wasting my time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And waste all everybody else's time like this. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I can get through. I'm done trying. No comment. That's what I said. No, no comment. comment. You know what I mean? To me, it says a lot. It says a lot. Yeah. It says a lot. It's a very like no comments, a big comment. But at the same time, to me, it was the best option. Like I said, I had three options. I could either lie, which I don't want to lie. I don't want to do that. That's mm-hmm. a sick feeling. And like, oh, so great. I could lie. Um, or I could tell them the absolute truth on how I feel, which is not a good idea to do. I've already done it, and it's not going to do any good. Or I can just opt out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and I and so that's what I did. Then everybody else proceeded <clears throat> to talk about that it was a great idea and they thought that they did great and all this. And I'm like, okay. And then, the and then after the meeting, they come to you. Actually, I think it was terrible. Well, see, that's just it. It's <laughs> like, why did you just say that? I know. Like, really, really, you've got like 99% of the people that agree with you, but then they're so afraid of that 1% person that they all just like go along with this and don't actually Could speak be, up. But I actually don't, uh, I actually don't think that's the case. I think a lot of them, I, I would, I would never venture all of them thought it was a good idea. And so, which is, which is indicative that some of the people that said it was a good idea are lying. We're lying and, yeah. And, and, yeah. But I also think that a lot of them really did think it was a good idea. And they're allowed to think that. And I and I, I like them very much. And I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that, that the sky is falling. I'm not chicken yeah. little. But <clears throat> they think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. That's it. That's that's all. Let's yeah. just leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> that's that's all I can do. But but my point being that I I, I managed to separate myself, <clears throat> excuse me, as much as I could. And that's one of the techniques is I'm trying, <sighs> this is not good advice, but I'm trying to care a little less. I tried to care very much. I've got very deliberate about what I think we should do and why this is a bad idea. I did what I could. Hey, dude, it worked out for Peter in Office Space. He got a promotion <laughs> I, from not caring. I know, dude. You remember that? I I, I do. And Office that, Space yeah. is one of the best movies ever. Yeah. Did we talk about that when we didn't we list off our uh, favorite movies or something? Did we talk about Office Space? I don't know. Oh, we we did had it to come have. up. We had to have. It better, uh, yeah. otherwise, shame on us. No, but I mean, think like, think about how miserable and angry he was in that movie up until the point that he was hypnotized, yeah. and then he was happy, and then life just started working out. You know what I mean? You're right. Like, yeah, it's a yeah. big deal. Once dude. he stopped caring, all of a sudden, uh, like decisions were were the right ones. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, but you got to be keen on that. You can't just become yeah. 
you can't become a nihilist. You can't just uh, right. like, you know, you got to care about stuff. And this is where I need my own counseling is that I'm, I think I'm overcorrecting. You know what I mean? I think I'm actually it's over easy to do. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm doing at work. Like, <clears throat> whatever. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Whatever you guys want to do. You know what I mean? Do, do, go ahead. I like, like, what do you want me to do? You want to do this thing that is never going to be used? Sure. So that's, I mean, I've been here for 18 years and I've never, ever been that person ever. My job is all, my, in my internally has always been use every day to make them glad that they said yes to, to, to hire you. You know what I mean? Every day, no matter how long you've been there, mm -hmm. this is the first time, the first time that I would like, I'd be like, if I was my boss, I'd be like, well, here's what I need you to do. I need you to get over yourself or I'm going to fire you. You know what I mean? If I was my boss, I would, that's what I would say to me mm -hmm. because I like, I need to get over it. If it is my only way to get over it is just to disconnect. Yeah. I don't necessarily recommend that, but there are times you have to be able to identify what, what are you really going to give your attention to? Yeah. You know? I mean, this is going to be a pendulum for you. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, you were on one side where you were like super passionate and fighting for, for your opinion on this. And now you're, kind of rolling over and just taking it if you will yeah and you know that's not neither neither sides usually of a pendulum swing are, are typically good you want to find that middle ground yep so you're gonna have to kind of like work your way back to to i don't know pick pick your battles like figure out when when you be, will be able to get through on something and then when you know you know it's, you're gonna get upset and they're not gonna listen to you then just those ones you're just gonna have to be like disagree and commit like you said which i yep. i never liked that term I never liked that term, disagree and commit, because it basically meant like, like, OK, I'm just going to shut up, even though, you know, what I mean, like, it, like it you, does. You, you're getting <clears throat> silenced just to just so that people can move forward with the wrong thing in your mind, in, in your mind, yeah. in your mind. That's you're absolutely right. And disagree and commit really has more of a um, team sacrificing for the team yeah. energy to it rather than a really negative one. It's not designed to be super bleak like just but there's a certain level there's a certain level of disagreeing commit there's because certain... it can go the other way too like like you're 100 percent convinced you're right yep but what if you were wrong exactly 100 percent. what if you're actually dude wrong i'm the only and, one who feels this way right. like i how can there's no yeah. like i'm like how arrogant am i right there's no way i that i'm right and they're all wrong. because imagine no that's way. the case imagine that's really the case like you're you're in a different world some for some reason and in your mind they're doing the wrong thing but you're actually wrong about this yeah, because you're in a different world, and now you've got all your other team members like, this guy just won't let it go. Right, like he's wrong. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? You have to. And now yep. you've become the outcast because yep. you went so hard on on your ideals. Yep, dude. I'm telling you right now, I'm like, I'm trying to see value in what they're doing. I'm, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to entertain that I'm way off here. And that this approach was that's the good. right thing. Yeah, that's yeah. good. You got to have an open mind. Yes, and, exactly. And try to get as much perspective as you can. Yeah. In these kind of situations, especially if if you are like an odd man out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like then then something's uh, got to be off somewhere. Yeah. You know, either wow, they have been well brainwashed, and you're just you don't succumb to that, right? Uh, uh, or you potentially you're the one that's got it wrong. I could have it you wrong, I mean? I, I, dude. It's 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 hard to even entertain that I'm right. When I'm the only one who seems mm -hmm. to, like I said, other people, they do feel this way, but I'm the only one who's as vocal as I am. But I also, here's the other thing, bro. Uh, my, I, I do think that I have a very solid skill set of seeing the future in terms of, of what's coming, like based on certain things. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we've, I, and, I, and that's the other thing. I kind of want to be like, how many examples do I need to bring up? You know what I mean? This is like the same thing of of when I was like, we need to be working on this technology. And they're like, it's too expensive. It's too big. I'm like, it's going to get smaller. It's going to get cheaper. We need this. Yeah. We, yeah and you, blah, blah, you got blah. your portfolio that you just have to bust out. Anytime somebody is like, you know, not agreeing with you, just be like, well, here's my portfolio of me being right. Yeah. 20,000 times. That's what I'm in saying. Right. Past, but but you know, also, maybe you want to listen to me. That's 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 you're, you're nailing it. Like like I, I'm not just some dude. I'm not a new hire who's like overly vocal. I have like a lot of miles behind me, man. And I also <clears throat> didn't just sit there and just do the same job for 18 years. I've had many different roles and mm -hmm. I've led many different groups. And I I mean, I, I might know what I'm talking about. You know, that, that I think that's what's killing me, dude, is that when when. When I was brought in, I don't want to talk too much about this. It's going to rat hole. But when I was brought into this role, and I and I told them, listen, I'm not I'm not a overly technical person. And they said, I don't care. We're aware of what you have done, and we are aware that you just that you just know how to just make things happen. You know what I mean? So just like that, we need you doing that. 
Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, I'm just crushing projects left and right because they said, what do you need to do what you do? And I said, give me my developers, give me my customers and leave me alone. And you're going to you're going to be happy. And sure enough, bam, bam, bam. And we're talking a lot of business value, like like dollar money, mm-hmm. dollar wise, tons of money coming our way because of these projects being done. Very, very good because they gave me great developers. They left me alone. That was that was I was like happiest I've been at this job. And it's only in the last like six months they are changing everything on how I'm like what it's not broke don't fix it what are you what are you doing mm-hmm. what are you doing like it's and and don't do it that way that doesn't belong here you know what I mean you're gonna slow everything down you're gonna change optics on what they people think is important they're gonna start talking about PAS progress against schedule nobody cares <laughs> about that so I'm telling them I'm like listen to me very carefully this is what I'm saying this in the early stages when the powers to be meaning like the high up execs have a conversation on whether or not they're gonna continue to fund our group. Not one person is going to say, well, what's their PAS? Not one person. They're going to say, how much, what's their BV? What's their business value? Yeah, how is much it, money did they yes, make did my they company? Bring, did we hit $100 million yeah. this year? That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to ask you. If you bring in this methodology here to micromanage everything, everybody's going to pledge allegiance to PAS. That's all they're going to look at. And it's going to limit our BV because people are going to make it a priority to complete these ridiculous tasks that somehow somebody deemed some sort of value to, even though it has none. And that's where all the calories are going to go and mm-hmm. everything else is going to suffer. That's what's going to happen. And so I'm like, and so I'm trying so desperately and I can't get through. No, no, you just got to wait till it's, till it, it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. And your point is proven to, to sit back and say, I told you so. See, and, and, but I, you have no idea how desperately I want to be wrong. Yeah. I want, I want to eat my words, dude, because if I eat my words, it meant that not, first of all, I'm going to learn something here. It also means that all the people I really care about, their, their jobs are secure that we're not going to, yeah. you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like, it's going to mean like, Oh dude, I'm, I, I am being, this is, I am so not. You, and I told you, you care so about your developers then all of them. Yeah. Yes. Have you, have you ever tried like as they're coding, Coming into their cube <laughs> and just dripping water on their head, just drip, drip. Hey, to be drip. fair, you weren't my developer at that time, <laughs> so that's the time <laughs> we talked about that on a podcast. I don't even know what podcast it was. Well, I'm, you're, I'm really glad you did that. I'm gonna get off of this nonsense. Yeah. I'm gonna get back to the fun stuff. Um, let's you let's. I want you to take me through that because we've talked about this podcast. This was you popping off, and this is something and I, I had done. Yeah. It. So now I'm a grown man. Yeah. Uh, working <laughs> in, in a fortune what it 100 company whatever 500. it is yeah and uh doing work I was, I was actually doing work i was focused coding coding away probably and uh next thing i know i feel the strip of water hit my my head and i had short hair at the time like i'd buzz my head you know so yeah. it just hit scalp right away <laughs> bang you know and like, what the heck and uh and I kind of turn around, and, and it's you standing there, you know? And so I'm like, you know, I'm focused, you know? Like, whatever. Like, brush it off like he's a fly. You know, just leave me alone. I'm coding. And I'm going I'm back to drip. Dude, drip. Come on. Focus. I'm trying to focus here. You didn't say a word for the record. Yeah, this is all internally in yeah, my head. I'm just yeah. like, just maybe if I ignore him, he'll go away. And he didn't. He didn't go away. And so, the, so the rage started building because I'm just I'm, I'm just in the zone, man. Yeah. You like, come on, you have coders now. You should know when they're when they're in the zone, leave them in the zone. Don't screw with them. I don't know if you were coding. I think you were writing an email. Oh, please. You were probably ordering I didn't something care about on no Amazon. Email. <laughs> probably looking at my my statistics for Battlefield. Used to do that a lot at work. <laughs> you would have been in a better mood if you. Were yeah, that's doing true. That. That's true. My kill yeah. death ratio was insane. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So I got to the point to where I, I had had enough, you know, like you said, I got a long fuse. You found yeah. the end of it. Yeah, know? I did. You found the end of it that day. Yeah. And uh, and so I turn around with the intent of smacking the cup of water so that it splashes you in the face. <laughs> but I went a little hard, uh, apparently, because I turned around and, and I don't know if I've been like practicing to be a ninja Dude, or what. This was amazing. But like the the swoop. Of the hand up to the cup got cleanly uh, in between your fingers somehow. Yes, like, dude. I didn't hit your whole hand. <laughs> dude, you my hand I mean? didn't move. Yeah, your hand stayed perfectly still, yeah. but the cup just vanished. <laughs> yes, it exactly. just vanished. <laughs> it just and <laughs> at that point, I was like, uh-oh. Where's, where'd it go? Where'd the cup go? <laughs> next thing you know, you hear this <laughs> splash in the cube next to me. <laughs> and... uh 
Well, you think I have anger problems? Oh boy! Uh, the guy in the cube next to me—I, uh, we're not going to say his anger name. problems. Were I remember off his the name. Chain. Every day, I got to listen to angry phone calls with his wife or kids. I don't know. Do you remember but, his name? Uh, yeah, I do. The f- I first know and his last whole name. Yep. We're not going to say no. it. A Y. Um, <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh man. No, so the water good. hits, and that guy has a very short fuse. <laughs> yeah, short fuse, big bomb. Yeah. yeah. And he, <laughs> Jesus! Yeah, yeah. You guys even work here? Yeah. He was so mad you at kids. us because we were always always goofing around yeah. and distracting him. And, um, man, I didn't know what to say. I, I froze up um, and, you know, felt like, oh, my God, that was so stupid. I can't believe. I don't even know. I was still just, I was in shock. I was like, how did the cup... <laughs> Go up in the air, over, <laughs> and down. And How? Not, and not one drop remained in this cube. Right. <laughs> Perfectly dry. And at the same time, I was like, wasn't our friend standing next to you a second ago? Yeah, Where yeah. the heck did he go? Well, but there, was a, a, there was our other buddy hanging out yeah. just laughing along with me because we always like to razz yeah. you. Yeah. And he's just a smoke silhouette. Yeah. <laughs> And and then and then yeah and and then that immediate moment of oh man I I uh, whoops you know yeah. I it, you you set me off it, it, you got there I the bomb bad. went off and um and then you and then you stepped up you know in that situation you were the only one out of the three of us yeah who who like who kind of like took ownership of it even though yeah. I was the one that smacked the cup it should have been me, yeah obviously. but I was the instigator it, yeah it should have been it should have been me that that because I did the motion that did it but uh I was you know coming down from being pissed yeah and in shock of what just transpired yeah that I wasn't I wasn't ready to to step up but you were uh it's so you you apologized to the guy. You went in his cube and cleaned it up. I did. Did he leave? Did he like go no, to the cafeteria kept, or something? He watched you clean he, his cube. Well, he kept he kept working while I was cleaning it up. Like he was at his desk, you know. I just see you like wiping his chin. <laughs> <laughs> is it forehead? He got a little. He got a little <laughs> he's just working, and you're just you know patting his forehead dry. <laughs> Ooh, got a little on your crotch there. Let me get that for you, buddy. <laughs> no, no, no. It was just it was all over his desk and his papers and stuff. And, yeah. And like, because you actually said you're like sorry, and I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. That was that was my fault because I and to this day I still feel like yeah, you popped and you did your thing, but dude, I instigated the whole thing. The ownership was on me, and so and the thing is, you were so embarrassed. Um, so when you hit it, and then he got that reaction, and our buddy was vanished. You were so embarrassed, um, and it made me feel really bad. I felt I felt very guilty in that moment. I'm like, I brought this whole thing on, and now he's embarrassed. I was just trying to bug him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now he's really embarrassed. And so I was like, no, 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 that's my fault. I'm going to come clean that up. So I went around, and I did, I cleaned it all up. It was fine. And I told him, I'm very sorry, man. We were not. We were just, I'm messing with my buddy. It just it got out of control. I'm sorry. And I cleaned it all up, and he said thank you. And, and it was it was a it was a kind of a moment. Like I remember, we did we talked about all of this on another podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's coming yeah. back to me. Um, but that was a that you know we, we have these moments, and 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 I still I would be lying if I said I didn't have the capacity to get angry. I think everybody does, and I do I do believe that there are those different configurations. There's 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 short fuse, big bomb. Uh, there's, there's long fuse, big bomb. There's long fuse, little bomb. Like you're, to me, you're actually long fuse, little bomb. Your, your blowups are nothing. You know what I mean? Like they're really nothing. Yeah. Like you don't do anything. And, and I mean, good. I told some stories where I feel like those were bigger, yes. but one, you were 10 years old yeah. and the other one, you were a little bit yeah. older. I, I feel like I've gotten, gotten it under control. Cause I, I knew, you know, <laughs> getting caught smashing my mom's glassware oh my God, I that, still can't get over that, that I probably had what some. What are you doing? Anger management issues. That you I have too to many of these, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Typical me coming up with excuses, you know, reasons, uh, reasons to justify my stupid yeah, behavior. Right? It's so funny. But but yeah, I think I, I think I knew like, oh, you you got a you got some anger management issues that you need to work through, and and I, I did. I, I you know I didn't like see a professional. I just realized like you kind of mature, you know. Yeah. And you realize over time, like. Most of the things that we get upset about and we blow up about, like moments after that blow up happens, you realize it wasn't worth it. Like none yeah. of it, none of it was worth it. There's 10 years down the road, you're going to look back at this big situation at work that you're so upset about. And it's it's going to be like, oh, that wasn't as big of a deal as I made it out to be back then. You yeah. know what I mean? Like usually in hindsight, 
all these things just were so m- not meaningless, but not not as big as you make them out to be. Correct. Like, like we have the tendency to just. I, I would say nearly a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. It doesn't. We're not trying to trivialize the fact that there are real things where your anger is completely justified. I mean, let's be honest here. But I would venture that most of the things that we get angry about if you just take a moment and and, and to manage it you're going to realize this yeah. is not worth it and i think so here's a couple tricks that i do okay um sometimes when i get upset about something i i i actually have to ask myself what are you upset about because more often than not the thing you think you're upset about it's not that <laughs> that's just a that's just one of the layers or that's mm-hmm. just a symptom of the whatever you're actually upset about and it just helps center my mind to really figure out what it is right um and so when I can do that, then it helps me articulate what it is that's actually got me out of balance and what I can do uh, to manage it. Uh, another trick that I use, and this is something that's very important, um, give it time. Like the second, the second you're reacting to something while upset, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's, here's, here's an example. Um, so I, you know I'm, I have like a couch budget. I go through. <laughs> I, go through I mean, I, I, we yeah. got to the point to where bulk pickup. I was like, they're, they're going to start asking questions. Like, why are we picking up a destroyed couch at this at this house every couple months is what it was like for a while there, yeah. right? Because my dogs, they they really, I love my dogs very much, and we foster, and puppies, they destroy stuff. And Yeah, you, your classic foster fails. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. We have a lot of foster fails. But I try to train these dogs not to destroy because we don't want somebody to adopt them and then they, giving them up, right? Well, to do that, we end up going through a, a lot of couches. And that's just that I was very upset for a while there. I really was. And don't get me wrong, I still don't love this, but this is just what it is, man. Well, if I'm going to punish the dog and let them know not to do this, then I need to take the parts of the couch that they destroyed and I need to show it to them and they need to be reprimanded. Sometimes it's a swat on the butt or it's just a no or whatever. Now, my favorite thing is I have this. Um, can of air it's just like this thing that we carry on our walks it's specifically for training purposes oh, okay and um and it just makes this like loud noise it's really good for kevin bubbles because when we're out walking uh and he sees in the dog he flips he doesn't want to fight he wants to play with them but he mm-hmm. looks aggressive and he just he is just fixated on getting over there i've had to pick him up off the ground now this can just like it, it just completely snaps him out of it right so mm. uh so there's all these different techniques my point being this when they destroy something. So now it, it looks like Drax is not destroying the couch anymore, but he is destroying every single dog bed. So I've gone through, I think, like eight or nine dog beds at this point now. At least that's a little cheaper than a couch. Yeah, it is. But it's still like, <laughs> like well, we typically, they're, these dog beds are 90 to $100 a piece. But yeah. now we're like, let's get the cheap ones because we're going through them. Well, if he does this and I'm upset about it and I pick this thing up in a fit of rage to go punish him, no, stop. He needs to be reprimanded. We get it. Stop, pump the brakes, and calm yourself. And I'm not, I would not even say I'm perfect at this, <clears throat> but this is applicable all over the place. When something upsets you and it's time to have a reaction to it, try your best to not have uh, your reaction to it while upset. Give yourself time to process it, separate yourself from it, and you'll realize that all it really takes is some time. Mm-hmm. And time it will heal it. I have, a, I have a buddy of mine that he is short fuse big bomb he should not be one of my friends on paper but i love him you know what i mean i just do and when he you forget it he's no fuse big bomb let's do that <laughs> there's too Jeez. many and the reason i say that is because there's too many things that he gets outrageously upset about where i just want to be like nobody who has a functioning brain should be upset about that dude like it's very yeah. it's it's frustrating to me anyways i finally said well you know when you do this I want to help you. I do, but I don't want to make things worse. What's the best thing for you? Just tell me now, because he was in a normal sp- space, and he admits all this, too. When you're like this, what do you need? He said, it's just time. And that was a very honest answer. And so it's to the point to where anytime I got upset about stuff, just give myself some time, and it's amazing how it just heals you. Yeah. And it just gets you so much more. If you're be, If you're reacting while angry, you're doing it wrong. You can't do that. I'm not ridiculous. If somebody tries to start a fight with me in a parking lot or something, I'm not going to be like, well, wait till I calm down, then we'll fight. I, I, I understand it's, there's extenuating circumstances. Yeah. I think you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah I, not that my wife and I fight uh, often or hardly ever, but like anytime something would upset her, uh, she would just separate herself, you know, like just go 
go off somewhere on her own. Yeah. And I learned quickly, <clears throat> don't chase her. Don't, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like give her that space because yep. that's what she's doing. She's just going to go separate herself from whatever the situation is that's upset her and give it give it some time to, to breathe and think things through. And, and like anytime, you know, I get upset about something, I, that's what I do. I'm just, I, I don't react at all. And I'm just like, let me, let me see how I think about this tomorrow. Like yeah. I, I give it a full day, you know, like if, if some, something upsets me, I don't bring it up right then and, and then get in like a back and forth because I, I, I've heard that reason. I know I'm going to like start to get a little heated, say things I don't want to say. And I need to I need to really give some thought uh, and, and time into whether or not I care enough about this to make it a deal. Yeah, because, you know, potentially could be. And especially if you start to get upset and say stuff you don't mean. So I usually give myself like full. I'm just like, I'm going to sleep on this. See how I feel. And I've heard that, like, don't go to bed angry before. But I don't know if I fully agree with that because this works for me anyway, is I go to bed and I wake up the next day and I'm like, OK, remember that thing you were upset about last night? How do you feel now? And most of the time, I'm like, yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, yeah. Like, why were you so upset? Yeah. Like, what? It, was, it, was, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. And and now I'm in a better space to where if I do bring it up, you know, like, let's 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 say my kids are doing something that I don't want them to do or whatever, right? Like, just whatever it is. Like, now I can actually have, a, a like, a grown-up conversation with them because emotions aren't going to get the best yes. of Yes. I've given enough time to come down from whatever made me mad. Now I can just be like, okay, now I can start to use logic and reasoning in the discussion as opposed to have I, you know, attacked it the night before. I was probably going to not even have given it enough thought yep. to have my logic and reason ready. And instead, I was going to be pure emotion and blow up, and none of that would have ever, like, helped the situation Doesn't at do all. any good. Yeah. No, it doesn't. There's never a time where it's like, man, I'm really, really glad we both acted so illogical on that problem. That we had. <laughs> you know, it doesn't exist. You have to. But how do you feel about that whole saying of "don't go to bed angry"? Um, I don't necessarily agree with it. I, I, I think I'm, I'm more in your camp. I, I understand the spirit of what it is, and I think that the spirit of what it is is whatever you're have you two are having an issue with. Get the cards on the table and deal with it now, man. Otherwise, you're going to sweep it under the rug and it's going to fester. I think that's the yeah, energy. You're going to bottle it, it up, yes. and, and eventually it'll explode, right? Yes, but but I think that there is merit in being like, let me just let me sleep on it and just see how I feel. And I think most times you're going to wake up and be like, what what do I care Dang. so much about? Like this is so ridiculous. But we're also you have to understand, like we're getting older, and it. it, it less things are on the table that actually affect us emotionally. <laughs> it used to be lots of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like, it's just so there's so few and far between that there's something worth getting all worked up about. I can imagine like if I went home in, uh, or if I, if I, if I went home or if I, I leave the studio to go home after we record and my windshield is smashed out or the driver's side, I'm going to be like, Oh man, I'm not going to like not have a reaction to it, but that's, that's it. When I was a kid, that would have consumed me for mm -hmm. like weeks, not just because it was harder to pay for it back then, not just for that, but because just the unjustness of it and this, the, like, it was just, oh, it just, it would consume me. And now not so much, but it also, it also puts us in a space to where when it is time to have a reaction to something, we have a lot more energy because <laughs> yeah. we didn't spend it on so many little things, but there's new things now, uh, that I noticed that trigger me. Hmm. I like this. So yeah. Me too. Um, one of the major things is protecting my family. Yep. So yep. Oof, this is where I know, like I'm a little worried that there are some still anger man management issues I need to deal with because like if we're driving, I got a car full of my entire family, everyone I love. Yep. And somebody cuts us off. Yep. Uh, or, or is driving in a way that puts our lives at risk. The blood starts to boil so hard that mm -hmm. I'm I start to get a little worried I may end up in prison. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, like those are the kind of things it, it, and I just I can't I have a hard time stopping myself from like playing it all out in my head of what I would do. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but it, I, you're not going to get a whole lot of advice from me on this one because I'm <laughs> I'm right there with you. If if I however, I will say this, the reason I know I'm not at risk <clears throat> to cause a problem in those moments if I'm driving, same situation. I'm driving, family's in the car, and somebody cut not not just cut off, but I'm talking like super aggressive. Like right. I there wasn't an accident because I was that good to avoid a type thing. Yes, I'm very, very upset. 
And and what I want to do are is some really dark things that people would not think that Skiz has in him, but I want to do those things. However, um, my desire to keep my family safe is much greater, and so it uh, there's no risk of me flying off the handle because it's putting them at risk. Right. Right. That that's why the, yeah. the, 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 there was the perfect storm. Yeah, all that when, stuff happens in your head, but has it had it actually played out, you wouldn't cross the line. I exactly. Yeah. I, I'm not because the, you never know how these things can go south. Mm-hmm life-changing yep. in a second and and i've i told you uh, we've talked about that where <clears throat> a colleague of mine lost her life coming back from maternity leave because of road rage that she wasn't even involved in see what i'm saying like yeah. it goes so much further than that so that stuff plays through my head and i um i i just and don't want to ever make things worse you know right. and so <clears throat> but you know it doesn't it doesn't mean i don't feel it for a second and and when i get cut off like now i'm a little bit more Dude, if I'm by myself, I, it's it it, it, it calm. barely it barely, barely bothers, bothers me. Barely bothers me. Yeah, the same exact thing with it with my wife and kids in the car. <clears throat> just boils me, dude. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I don't remember. Well, I think you know, once you have kids, you know, uh, it or, changes or when, you. Yeah, it changes you. It, it it's does. like okay, if 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 I was driving and it was just me and you, would I feel that way? And I I love you. But not as much as no. I love my wife and kids. You know what I mean? I don't shouldn't. see. I don't see if we were just hanging out in the car driving and something happened, getting as upset. Yeah. As as if it was you know with my kids in, in the car and stuff. So it, it's weird, just like how life is is kind of like changed. What triggers my yeah. my anger now? No, I'm with you. When I'm by myself, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. Now it is starting to now a little bit because somebody's negligence. I mean, I almost died. You know what I mean? They didn't even tap mm. the brakes going through that red light. They completely destroyed my car, and I, I'll, I'm, we've talked about it. It was, I was a foot away from probably losing this leg. You know what I mean? Like it was, I got lucky. That was upsetting. So now when I see, when I'm, even when I'm by myself, I don't even have to be at danger. And that same intersection, I see people blow that red light like at least, at least once a month, and I just can't believe it. And there's a big part of me that's like, I. I I think if I was terminal, this I would it wouldn't last long. I think I would track that person down. Like I, I like what I want to do is follow them, and just wait till they park wherever and just rip the stems out of all four of their tires. That you do you should not be operating a vehicle. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. an, that's an overreaction. But but I still I think that that because I did get hit and it did affect me and did kind of invade me. I think I do have a lighter sensitivity to that. But all of the same tools apply. Give it some time. Yeah. Calm yourself. Don't make things worse. Oh, and here's the thing is you have to know that whatever just happened that upset you, boy, do you have the capacity to make it so much worse, so much worse. I mean, look, at you can see it in sports all the time. There's a bad call. The athlete's very upset. The damage has seemingly been done. There's a bad call. Move on. Now I'm going to scream at the ref. Now you've been kicked out. Now you just took your value away from your team. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You know what yeah. I mean? And and I was, uh, I used to joke about it. So. <laughs> when we would watch football and uh, in, if the refs would do calls that I didn't like, and I mean, they had to be blatant or they would do several in one. Do you remember? I'd be like, if I was a coach, every possession the team has would be on the 50 yard line. You know what I mean? I was like, I mean, because, they, because I, I would be like, I would be fine losing, just flipping out, but they could find like tens of thousands of dollars for that. But, <laughs> but I don't know. Just that's, that is a very, just give it time like that to me that's the number one thing whatever yeah. you don't don't feel like you're inhuman because something's upset you but understand that when you are reacting to it while upset you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong you're making it worse you're not speaking clear and some people are going to find a way to justify why it was okay to do that and there might be some times and i just can't think of them but that's just it Yeah, i'm trying to think have i ever had a time where you know, I I didn't wait, and I engaged in an argument when I was hot, and it helped. Right? No, no, no. I can't Never. think of it. At least personally, there may be you know there may be people out there that that somehow uh you know can control their emotions during that those situations a little better, but not me. I I know I I've know from experience. That, you know, if I'm gonna speak up right then and there when I know emotions are high, then I'm gonna it's gonna make things worse. So I just, yeah, I just wait. You know, and sometimes uh, and sometimes I let it go completely. And, yeah. and I do wonder, though, I do wonder sometimes when I let things go, did I did I let it faster? There, there you go. That's there that's you go. the key is like 
Did I let it go because it was the right thing to do to let it go and I will actually move on mentally from this forever? Or did I just bottle that up and yeah. someday yeah, there's going to be an explosion? You know what yeah. I mean? Like that, there, there, I do have some concern about that, you know, because like you said, I, I, I have a pretty good deal of patience. It's just it, where, where is that coming from? Is that because I actually am forgiving or am I storing? Yeah, you know, I I don't think I think it's neither. I think I think that um, it's not about you being forgiving. I think it's about this all comes down to you being very, very smart. And I think that you're able to calculate what's in front of you at a hyper speed and realize what is the best option here. And you you're I've said it before. You're a, a path of least resistance person. Right. And sometimes mm. confrontation, oftentimes, almost all the time. confrontation. <laughs> yeah, I don't do confrontation. Yeah. yeah you don't. You're all. not into it. And yeah. that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, uh, you need to be able to identify when it does have the capacity to fester. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. give yourself some time and then reapproach it in a diplomatic way. Right. That's 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 the best way. It's easier said than done. I get that. But you are all about not allowing uh, anything to get in your way for whatever your goal happens to be. And so you're going to skew your reality to match whatever reality you need to. And in some cases, that's going to going to be that's going to include convincing yourself that you're okay with this and you might not be right. And then what ends up happening is you, you, so I'm actually talking to you and people who are like this, me too. I think everybody does this, um, but you specifically, you end up having resentment for the person that brought this discomfort and the person that brought this threat vector into your life. And you don't like, you don't mistreat them. You don't do anything like that. You're just kind of have some resentment and you just put a label on how you feel about them and you put them in the shelf and you move on. And now they have that label because you didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So maybe that was actually worth talking about. However, I do think most of the time um, you're able to realize this is just not a big deal. And I think you do that fast. I think, I think, yeah. cause I, I think it all boils down to you're very smart. You're very driven on what you want to happen in your life. And, Things aren't going to get in the way. I don't think it's a forgiving thing, you know. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, maybe right. Yeah, you know, but, but I <laughs> but I could be wrong. I, I just don't. I I don't. I don't think it's a forgiving thing. I don't think it's anything other than no. I don't you're forgive. Smart. I'm still mad at that one dude for transferring yep. that call to me. Yep. A day my first week of that that call center job, yep. and <laughs> I told him I was in the middle of uh, I don't know. We had a we get the the help desk stuff, you know. You mm -hmm. get a call, and then after the call, you gotta like log a ticket. And write down everything that was discussed and blah, 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 right, for the system. And I think I was doing that. I was writing, I was finishing the ticket of my last call, and this person asked me if I could take a call. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm still documenting the last call or whatever. I'm busy, you know? And they heard me. I know they heard me, but they transferred the call anyway, and I'd never forgive that person. You never, ever. And that was 20 years ago maybe yes, by now. That was 18, you've been there 18, 18 years so probably ago. 17 years in. 17 years But, in. dude, like, yeah, I... I <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's, uh, and I'll see. I'd see him in the hallways like d a decade after that happened, and I would still just be like, "That guy." I know that you were guy, still upset. Um, <laughs> crack me up about like the dumbest thing ever. He transferred a call. And, I mean, so yeah, I guess I I have a hard time letting things go too. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. You you put that label and you, you yeah, like you said, life. he's on that shelf. He's never getting off that yeah. shelf. Well, what's funny is I I think I told you. I mean, we talked about this in a podcast when we get too into it but i ended up working night shifts with that guy uh who I, I actually got along with quite well you know what i mean but he could be like that he could he was very passive aggressive and uh he he it was just us and he said something i don't remember exactly what it was i don't remember but it was one of those things it was very passive what he him forwarding that call to you was passive aggressive mm -hmm. he was just like he that was an abuse of power that that wasn't even authoritative power. It was technological power. He just I can just hit these buttons and now it's your problem. That's what bothered you. There was an abuse of power. Yeah. And it was very it was invasive and it was the wrong thing to do. Well, it, it was just uh, him and I and he said some things uh, uh, passive aggressive and I'm not that's not a thing I'm going to let go. <laughs> I responded while angry because I was still pretty uh -oh. young. You know what I mean? I responded while angry, but I also was very into. Um, extinguishing these moments when people were like that with me. And I don't think I was diplomatic. I was very aggressive with him. You know what I mean? To the point to where he, I, I alluded to him, it's two in the morning and there's nobody else in this room. You know what I mean? As, as in like, you need to take stock of where you're at. You know, this is, and if, it, if something were to happen, 
you're going to lose, dude. You're half my size. You know what I mean? You remember, he was a little guy. This is straight up threatened him. Oh, dude, it was bad. <laughs> and it was it was a weird situation because I, but I, I think I, I think I handled that poorly. You know what I mean? I think. Oh, you, yeah, I mean, you spoke in the moment, right? Like I said, I mean. I did. I did. What I, what I, and so I'm older and wiser now. And, and for the record, I've actually always did admire his work ethic because there, that was not to be questioned. The guy was a hard worker. He was very smart. Um, what I needed to do was go across the room and pull up a chair and sit next to him and be like, you're very, you're, you're upset with me. I want to know why I don't want to, I don't want you to think I'm trying to take advantage. Tell me what you're feeling, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Then he probably, if I had to guess, he probably have been like, well, I feel like I'm doing most of the work here. And I'd be like, you, you might actually be doing that, but I'm not, we're not doing the same work. I'm doing an entirely different job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, but, but let's, let's talk, let's see what we can figure. That would have been the way to do it. Yeah. Why did I have to be such a jerk about it? You know what I mean? Like that's, there's no need to be, but I was very upset that he was taking these liberties to try to be passive aggressive with me when, and there's nobody around you or crate who are, what are you doing? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, but I was upset and that was, I handled it poorly. Well, uh, older, wiser now, yeah. I suppose there's probably people that are listening that are younger <laughs> you know, and, this is and, good. and maybe, maybe, you know, find themselves time. doing, doing that. And, yep. and maybe this may, you know, uh, learn vicariously through our our mistakes our history you know like i i think that's become a part of this podcast whether it was something we envisioned or or not is just you know us sharing because we are older now our kind of life experiences that we've done a lot of growing you know i no longer smash mayonnaise jars (laughs) when i get mad (laughs) kick it over uh you know and and so yeah if if it helps kind of like expedite that that mature that maturing the uh you know just just understanding of, of how to like deal with emotions uh then then i think then we're helping I yeah hope, yeah i hope you yeah, know give it time man yeah give it time and i just i also want to leave that that reacting while angry while i do think that it's the wrong thing to do and it's going to detract from your original intention to write the ship um it doesn't mean you're not human doesn't mean you're stupid. It doesn't mean any of those things. Uh, and and also, again, I'm t- I'm talking about normal situations. There's certain circumstances where I'm like, I have no advice because that's so overwhelmingly wrong. What it was yeah. done to you, I don't know how anybody can react any differently than what you did. I understand that. I get it, right? But I think that if everybody exercises the give it some time, I think what people are going to end up finding is that more often than not, they're going to realize, I, I didn't even care that much about it. And now that I gave it time, I can speak about this with a clear mind, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and actually, like, address this. And and I don't even really need to speak about it. I don't really even care that much. You right. know, it's just crazy. That's typically where I find myself waking up the next day like, the, I don't know why I let that even consume any time yeah. in my head. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. <laughs> come it, on. It's, you know, I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know how to phrase this, but... It goes with, I think, what we're talking about and also goes with um, just focusing on something too hard. I don't know how else to put it other than this. I ha- I call it the ceiling fan, the ceiling fan theory, okay? This is a ridiculous thing for skids to say, but I came up with what I call the ceiling fan theory a long time ago. And this is what it is. We were at work, and uh, there was some sort of thing in one of the projects that people were f- focusing on, fixating on. I don't even remember what it was. But boy, there was everything to them. This one little thing, and I'm like, this is like not a big deal. Why are they so? This is dry. This is driving all of their attitudes and their energy and everything. Well, it was about uh, two weeks later that I had this crossover in my mind of this is what's going on. My wife and I went shopping for a ceiling fan. So now I want you to imagine you go to Home Depot or you go to Lowe's and you go to the ceiling fan section. Dude, there's like 70 different ceiling fans, and there a lot of them are really impressive and. Some are like technologically advanced. Some are just very like artistic, beautiful, all that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, we went to look for a fan. Boy, we had a hard time picking one. You know, I mean, there's so many. Does that go with our color scheme? Is that good? I don't know. That one, maybe that one was flush. That one's got kind of a nice approach. I don't know. We're going on and on. And I'm like, we're going to buy one. We're going to install it. And we're never going to look at it ever again. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Yeah. So we picked one and it's a nice fan. And I installed it. Now it's just there. I'm, I it was it was when we were shopping for a ceiling fan, you would have thought we were shopping for a human heart. Like we were just like it was our everything. It was our everything. And it was just like this is we can't mess this up. This is good, like a relatively permanent fixture. We can't make, it's a ceiling fan, dude. You're not going to look up at it. You're just not mm-hmm. going to. You might you don't want to get one that's complete garbage or whatever, but 
when you're narrowing it down between one, between five different, just pick one. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you're just that means there's five out there you like and you're never going to look at it again. It works the same way with anger. Is that when the thing is happening, you're staring at the ceiling fans. You're trying to, this is all you can think about. It's this thing that has upset me. This is the only thing I can think about. I need to react to it now. But if you give it time, you move on with your life and it floats above your head like a ceiling fan. You realize, you look back and be like, what, what are we talking about? I don't really care. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yep. that's just, and I think that's, I think that that is going to bode well for people if they just, just give it some time. Perfect. Time. Every time I start to get angry, I'm going to think about a ceiling fan. Think about now. a ceiling fan. Do just, that. Just, just triggering that thought is going to be enough to calm me down, I think. <laughs> yeah, that'll work, too. That'll work, too. Uh, I tell you, I've, I've been wanting to put together a course for new uh, parents of competitive softball because I've been through it all now, and uh, it is that is one of the most infuriating chapters of my entire life. It is, it is I can't even get it. It is so messed up. And one of the things that I would say is, would be, if I was to write a book about this, the chapter would be called Let the Weekend Finish. Because when there's something unjust going on that you th you've deemed unjust going on with your child who's part of this in a, in a game, no matter what it is, maybe somebody came in that took their spot that you absolutely know that was the wrong move. You know that your kid's better. It's not always the case. Sometimes it is. Uh, coach might have a reason that you just don't know. I get it. Let the weekend finish. There's five more games to play. Chances are... When the weekend's over and they got all the playing time that they that they needed, it just like quells it, and you go back to that moment you were so furious, you thought you were going to come onto the field, like like all those yeah. things happen, you know what I mean? And so, but again, if the, maybe the weekend finishes and you realize, no, I'm even more mad because this is so wrong. Well, then you move teams, but you <laughs> but if you're there, you let the let the weekend finish, which is another version of give it time. Yeah, you got to give it time. You cannot react right then and there. This doesn't work. Smart, dude. Yeah. Very smart. I bet you there's a lot of not just softball parents, not specifically club softball parents, but I think that translates to uh, parents with kids in any sport just yep, about, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, just give it time and, and see and put some trust in a coach unless they're absolutely horrible, like my son's seventh grade uh, <laughs> football coach was. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that those memories came back to yeah. me uh, two nights ago. My youngest now is going to that school, and we had to do the tour. Oh, so she's going to that tour, that school next year. Mm -hmm. and we're doing the tour, and they they took us to the football field during the tour, and and all and, and all the memories of me sitting in the oh, stands, yeah. wanting to strangle this football coach yeah. for making all the wrong decisions, came back to me. Oh, I understand, man. <laughs> but guess what? He's no longer coaching there. So. Yeah, shocking. <laughs> See, they figured it out. Yeah. Give it time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, this was a this was a good topic. I think it was I think it was great. And like I said, I think there's a lot of people that were a little probably a little afraid to tune into this one because thinking anger was going to start to get their blood boiling. Yeah. But I mean, we have such great stories. Of, we do. Of what's happened with our anger moments and also some nice reflection upon that. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about it. I am, too. And I think that like <laughs> I'm going back to that opening clip. <laughs> and, and, and it is here. I think it's healthy to look at the fact that anger has the capacity to be funny, because if you if you do that, you can, it helps you kind of ridiculous realize how ridiculous you can be. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Bill O'Reilly, he he's a human man. He's a human. That was a very human moment, and yep. it was also really funny. Like he yeah. was just so out of his mind, upset about nothing. One thing I meant to look up, um, I <laughs> so actually saw it come across my feed. Because we were studying up for the to to do that bit, sure. right? And I saw this get, video get recommended of Bill O'Reilly and him reacting to that clip many years many later. Many years later, I think so I saw that. So let's let's after this is over, uh, let's, let's watch let's it. Let's watch it. See if it's and, the same and one. See, yeah, see, uh, see yeah. what his retrospective yeah, is yeah. on that moment because yeah. uh, uh, he's got it he probably laughs at it today we'll I, see I, you know i'm gonna look I'm, it up though i'm we'll gonna look it up look if it's up. the same one i think he's like pretty nonchalant like whatever i, I don't know we'll okay, let's watch. okay we'll yeah. find it we'll find it all right but yeah hey we're gonna watch that clip thanks for sticking yeah, around yeah see you guys <laughs> gotta go <laughs> 